Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, good morning. My name is Richard Nickerson. I'm a locomotive engineer with Union Pacific Railroad. This is Kathy Gregg. She works in the locomotive shop here in Roseville in the, for Union Pacific. But today we're here as volunteers for a group called Operation Lifesaver. It's a group of people who know that you guys live and work around locom uh, locomotive tracks, railroad tracks, and we want to talk to you a little bit about railroad safety. I think there's a lot of mystery that's involved with what your responsibility are, sp responsibilities are around railroad tracks. Uh, if you could, though, I'd like you to make sure your cell phones are on vibrate, and here, take your earpieces out for so just a short video, and some of the information we're going to present is really important for you. We're going to show a quick video, and then we're going to do a quick slide presentation. So let's just get started. I know our time is a little short, so... No, and we're saying a train just hit a car. Uh, there's a woman screaming. I don't, I don't think anybody's alive in it. His skull was fractured, what we call it comminuted. Translation, it's in little pieces. Is there anybody trapped in that car? It's like if you took a hard-boiled egg and smashed it against the countertop and you turn it over and smash it and smash it and smash it. locomotive hitting a vehicle is like you stopping on a beverage can. The can's crushed. Well, that's your car. What's inside the car? Bodies. They're all squatted. I think there's two dead people out here in the track. What kind of car is it? Just tell me so. You can't tell, man. I okay. mean, I, I watched that thing fly through there. It knocked on me. Uh... One morning I wake up, she's on the couch. I leave for work. The next that day I come home and I'm watching them pick her up and put her in a body bag. You can't beat the train. You can't outrun it. You can't outdrive it. You can't outthink it. It will do what it will do. They were approaching the railroad crossings and they saw the gates go down. According to the person that survived in the crash, he said that the driver just drove around the arms and he hit, tried to hit the brakes and it was too late. Most of his brain we never found. We had a piece of the top of his brain that was stuck in his clothing, in his, in his hoodie sweater. And the rest of it is somewhere out on that train track. You're standing on the tracks. And it's 200 feet down the road, and it's doing 60 miles an hour. It's going to hit you before you can even react. Those are the people that we collect. They collect them in garbage cans. My daughter and three of her friends went around the guardrails. Now I don't have my baby. Three other families don't have theirs and two babies don't have mamas. All because they were in a hurry. I plead with all youth, anybody, 
And I used to be guilty of doing it myself, going around guardrails. Don't go around them guardrails. Stop, look, and listen. I would like to start off by showing that just to kind of get you, get you set for what we're going to be talking about, about railroad safety. So the reason we're here in the interest of safety, we're here because we work around railroad tracks. We see this kind of stuff all the time and we want to make sure you, this isn't somebody in this room or somebody that you know. So we hear about it every day. You've heard about stuff recently in this area. Uh, most accidents that happen, uh, there's, a, there's a, an, an incident versing, uh, use it, uh, between a train and a car or a pedestrian about every three hours. We had over 99 fatalities in the state last year. So that's why this is a really important uh, topic. Anytime is train time. When you look at both of these photos here, um, a lot of times the perception is I have plenty of time, I can get across. The fact is you don't. So when you see a train coming, let it go. Take that extra few minutes just to wait and be patient. Um, on this side here, uh, where it says San Clemente, they have lights and they have arms that go down. Don't cross them. Your life is worth it every single day. Your family, people like that that have to um, stay behind um, because the choices that we make really are the ones that have the hugest impact. So we ask you that when you come up to railroad tracks, always pay attention, look both directions, and if you see a train coming, please stop. Yeah, so it's look, listen, and live. Pull up to the gates, look for trains, listen for the sounds, and live. Trains can't swerve. If you notice on the inside of this locomotive, this is what it looks like on the inside one. This is where the engineer, which my friend Richard is an engineer, this is where he sits, this is his office. There's no steering wheel can't swerve if there's a truck or a person or a bicycle on our tracks. The only thing we can do is stop. It takes a while to stop. So again, if, if you're in that situation, please wait for the train to pass. Yeah. So we, we like to talk about stopping. Most people say, well, how come the train didn't just stop? We like to use this slide. So our passenger car takes about 200 feet at 55 miles an hour. But the average freight train through this area once the engineer determines it has to come to an emergency stop, you can see it takes a mile, a full mile before that train is actually going to come to rest and stop. So trains can't stop in time. If you relate back to the video, it talks about uh, that car was thrown 300 feet, which is about a football field. Put 18 of those together, that's how long it takes for that train to stop. 18 football fields, just a little around a mile. So think about that. We all have seen football fields, so relate that back to it and the severity of it, how long it takes. Due to the weight of the train, it constantly goes, even though the brakes are applied, the weight will constantly push that train until it's able to come to complete stop. So we'd like to show this slide too, where people talk about what happens if I get stuck? What if I'm at a railroad crossing or a track and I get stuck? So you can see the train is coming towards the car. The most the first thing you do when you're stuck, get out of the car and get away. We show these arrows to show you want to move at a 45 degree angle away from the tracks and towards the train. Anybody think of why we would do that? So that way you're not in the way of the debris. The debris, right? They said that wouldn't be in the, well, if that train were to impact your car, there's going to be a lot of metal and glass and pieces of rock. So we want to move away and towards the angle of the train. The weight ratio, look at the car compared to aluminum can. How many of you just by a show of hands have stepped on an aluminum can to smash it? Probably pretty much everybody in here for the most part. That's the same. 
uh, impact as a train or a locomotive uh, impacting a vehicle. Yeah. Same exact impact. That the, the vehicle will be crushed. You can see it right here. It's in pieces, almost unidentifiable. And so often when you step on that aluminum can or crush it in pieces, you're not even sure what brand it is. Same thing happens to the vehicle yeah. and the people inside. So we live, in, we live in an area that's pretty recreationally focused. And these are the kinds of things we see out on the railroad tracks. We see people jogging and riding their bikes, motorized vehicles. The problem is you can, you can see here that the train is probably around the corner. The person jogging probably wouldn't hear it. One, it's very quiet. It's, I, was just, I like to point out this video. Does anybody know what they're doing here? This? They got their ear down on the railroad track. You ever seen anybody do that? seen that right there's a misnomer that that you can actually hear a train coming but in the years and years ago rail was put together in sections it was bolted section after section and as the train would go over it would actually make like a clickety clack sound now we don't do that anymore rail is all put together it's welded rail we call it ribbon rail because it goes forever miles and miles so those people would never hear that trains are incredibly silent what makes them noisy is the warnings the bells and the whistles so a train coming around the corner, I think this gives me, a train coming around the corner here, that person would never hear it coming. This, this person here would never hear it coming behind them. And the train crew, the crew that's on that, doesn't expect there to ever be anybody there. We don't come around the corner looking for people because frankly this is private property, it's railroad property. So, and then this person here, they're riding a motorized vehicle, they got a helmet on, the sound of their vehicle probably would make it hard for them to hear even when uh, the whistle and the bell. We also see people crossing the train tracks there at a place that's not approved for crossing. So we like to show these because we are, we are in, a, in an area that people like to hike and bike. The railroad property is not the place to do that. Three feet hangover. <clears throat> look at the tracks. And then look up at the locomotive. Locomotives, boxcars, anything that they pull hang over at least three feet on each side. So you have the size of the locomotive and six extra feet. And when you look at that, <clears throat> it's pulling maybe a, a lumber car. And that lumber car, maybe one of the straps broke so there's a piece of lumber <coughs> hanging out or there's a strap hanging out. That if it went by and you're standing close enough to slide straight through you. You know, so you have to not only be prepared um, for the locomotive and its hangover, but everything that pulls behind it. And you also have to remember, <clears throat> Richard touched it a little bit about it, is this is this is railroad property, this is private property. Okay. And it goes pretty far back, probably, probably in this picture, it's probably about uh, 25 feet off into the dirt or the grass that's our property. So it's really valuable that you don't enter our property, just as I wouldn't enter your home without permission. Come to your house, I'd knock on the door, you'd have a choice to let me in or not because that's your private property. Same thing here. Um, we don't want incidents to happen. That's why we come and we educate you so that you, you have those opportunities to live a long life. So I'd like to show this because we have a lot of tunnels and bridges in this area especially. The train and the tunnel were designed for each other. There is no extra room. So riding, walking, uh, running over a bridge or walking through a tunnel, if a train were to come, there's nowhere to go. There is absolutely nowhere to go. Uh, we use that overhang picture to demonstrate that. You see the tracks, but you have to remember there's, there's uh, about six feet, with three feet on each side. So we want to stay off. As a matter of fact, the next slide here, you'll see a sign posted. These signs, trespassing is dangerous and illegal. Stay off railroad tracks. These signs are posted at places that show you that it's railroad property. And it's, again, it's illegal, and it's the like thing, it's stupid. And when you go back to the bridge, what are your alternatives? You can't outrun the train. You know, you don't have a lot of choices on what's going to happen. And remember, personalize this. My partner here, he's up in the cab. He is the engineer. What's the impact on his life and his family's life when somebody puts themselves at risk and he, he's the one who has to live the rest of his life, knowing that there was absolutely nothing he could do, somebody was trespassing, somebody is where they shouldn't be, and now his life and his family's life is going to be impacted. Same with that individual that was injured or killed, their family's going to be greatly impacted, not just that individual. 
Okay. One of the reasons that we're targeting and getting out talking to schools here in Rockland is Rockland has decided to become a uh, no blow zone, no whistle zone. So that what that means is there are going to be crossings that you're maybe used to going over now. They'll have this sign. So the train that actually comes through that area won't blow its horn. You'll have the gates will still come down, the lights will still flash, and you'll have some incorporated sounds. So you can't expect to, uh, to listen for a train the way you did in the past. This is going to be really important. Just because you don't see a train doesn't mean it's not coming. If those gates are down, does anyone know when there's a time when you can cross around a gate that's down? Never. You can never. Even if there's no trains coming, if those gates are down, it's like a concrete wall. You can never go around those. Okay. So you're going to be seeing those coming up. I think it's August 1st is the start time for that. And it's important that you tell your family, tell your friends, you're not going to hear the trains anymore. Okay. You're going to have the, there will be sounds at the crossings. And if you wanted more information, there's websites here that FRA dot uh, dot, uh, dot dot gov can give you more information about that. Yeah. So emergency notification system, these are some ways to be able to identify where that location is if there is an emergency. If your vehicle is stuck on the tracks, um, maybe something else is going on and we need to call 911. Uh, you can look up here, and, and these aren't the correct numbers, but these are just for our examples. It says to report a stalled vehicle on tracks or other emergency, call 1-800-555-5555 and refer to the crossing. And you can look on them, like where these red marks are right here, there's going to be an ID number. And you give the dispatcher that ID number, or you call 911 and give them that ID number, and they'll do the same thing. It's just much quicker if you call that number right there. They'll be able to get to that crew, stop that crew ASAP. Um, hopefully, they'll have time to stop it, but we'll also get emergency vehicles heading that way. And hopefully, again, if that's your vehicle, you're going to get out, and you're going to get a 45-degree angle away from it. Um, keep yourself safe. All right, this also is a, a valuable, valuable information for just the gates are down. There's no train. I can't see a train. There's gates have been down for a long time. This is a number you could use to report that so it can be repaired if there's a problem, something we haven't, haven't seen. So we saw that slide earlier where they were crossing to go to the beach. Um, we have appropriate crossings. An appropriate crossing would be a crossing where a car goes over the train tracks at the gates. We also have in this area pedestrian crossings for bike traffic and, and foot traffic. And uh, so it, they're marked like this. They have a little, their own little gates. Um, around the uh, Sacramento Deltas, we have a lot of these. We have a lot of foot traffic. So we have to remember that where we cross the tracks, if there's a, a road crossing here and a road crossing here, we can never cross here. We have to go to one or the other. That's the appropriate crossing. That's the only place where it's not actually trespassing. Standing too close. Um, it's the same as standing on a curb. Cars are driving by. You always need to step back. Again, where the bells and the crossings are, the cross bucks on there that tells you railroad crossing. You want to stand behind that. That's your safety zone because remember we talked about the three, three foot hangover on each side? That's going to give you plenty of safe space to stand so that if anything is hanging over, it, you won't be the one that it uh, attaches itself to. Yeah, the rule of thumb here is you should be able to see those lights. That's where you, in a car, on foot, you should be able to see those lights. So we heard earlier about what were they doing? They're putting something on the, on the rails. This is really common. I think probably when I was younger I did this. But it's something I didn't know, probably something you don't know. I'm going to tell you, when something is placed on the railroad tracks like this and it's compressed by a locomotive that weighs millions of pounds, that metal or that coin or that rock has to go somewhere. And because of the shape of a locomotive wheel, it's out. And what we find happens over and over again, hundreds of times every year, the person who placed something there, as they watch it, it becomes a missile. And it's forced out with so much, so much pressure that it actually comes back and hits you. We have people that have lost limbs, eyesight, just been impaled by the pieces of things they put on the tracks. This is very dangerous. Okay? Plus, to get that close to the rail, you're trespassing. So don't ever put something on the tracks like this. It sounds like a fun thing, a good idea. It can be very dangerous. You know, before you, before you move on, Richard, I, I heard a little bit out in the audience about being impelled by a nickel. You don't want that to happen to you. It seems sort of silly, maybe a penny or something like that. It seems sort of silly. 
but the devastation that it causes is real. You know, and and for for a nickel to do that kind of damage to somebody is, is again devastating. So that's why we're trying to here to educate you the value of not doing those types of things. Plus, you're trespassing again. Right. When you compress a, a nickel or a penny, what really happens? It becomes can become red hot. So it might just hit you at a slow speed, but it's burning. So that's, again, something you haven't thought about. So stay off, stay away, stay alive. Uh, two things here, again, my partner Richard up in this cab. That's him driving. That's his job. That's his livelihood. Yeah, yeah don't throw rocks at me. People are throwing things at, at our locomotives and our engineers and our conductors. Why? Because it's fun? Not really sure why. It, it has devastating consequences to my family, my friends, up in that cab. It also could have devastating, devastating consequences to you on the ground because those, again, become projectiles, and where are they going to go? They're going to come back towards you at a higher rate of speed than what you threw it. <clears throat> also, if you look at the two gentlemen, they're standing in between railroad tracks. You have always got to expect that railroad tracks are live tracks. Just because there's weeds there doesn't mean a train's not going to come there. There's railroad tracks, always expect to train. Again, these guys are trespassing also. Mm -hmm. Stay off, stay away, stay alive. Railroad property is private property. What most people don't realize about the way uh, railroad cars go together, they connect with a coupler, and there's a lot of movement to allow for that expansion. So while they're really close together in that picture, at the other end of this train, they start moving. That's going to separate as much as six feet. So that person climbing through there would probably end up falling. They wouldn't expect that train to start moving because nobody knows he's there. All of a sudden that train starts moving. They fall. There's a lot of metal and rock and debris and then the train is moving over you. So stay off of railroad equipment. Again, stay off, stay away, stay alive. Please don't crawl under. Again, like Richard said, expect movement at any time. Look for the dead stream crossing, cross safely. Uh, to protect yourselves and those around you. We like to talk about graffiti. Again, this boxcar belongs to a company. Could be Union Pacific, it could be Amtrak. Well, not Amtrak, but it could be a uh, number of companies. It's like your own personal car. You wouldn't want somebody riding on your car. We don't want people riding when it's, it's dangerous and it's illegal. And it's, yes, yeah, trespassing. <laughs> yeah. so. so again, stay off, stay away, stay alive. I bet you guys, if you live near railroad tracks, I bet you've seen some of these pictures here before. A mom with her children, it's quicker, she thinks it's quicker for her to go across the tracks than it is to walk down to the pedestrian crossing. Um, the kids, maybe they're going to the park or they're leaving school or going to school, it's quicker for them. They don't realize, that's why we're here to educate you, the dangers, and plus you're trespassing your railroad tracks. We saw in the video, they're trying to hurry in front of the train and that one boy slipped. There's nothing there to walk on. It's not really made for foot traffic. So you forget that and then you try to do something in a hurry. There's all kinds of glass and pieces of metal. Forget that the train's coming. There's things you can get hurt on just walking something through your shoe. I mean, it's, it's a very dangerous place. So the question is, will he make it? We saw that gentleman in the video, like Richard just said, going across the track. If you noticed, he barely made it with his life, but he lost his shoe. So that tells you the impact that as he was running, that train clipped his shoe, the back of his foot clipped his shoe. That could have been his life. Okay, so we're just asking you guys to stay behind the gates, stay behind the signals, let that train go. They can't swerve. They can't stop quickly like the car. They stay on the rail. Where the rail goes, they go. They don't want to impact you, so please don't put them in that situation. The average train takes about four minutes to clear a crossing. We have a rule. We have to be in clear within 10 minutes. So is there really anything important on one side of that track other than was it worth waiting 10 minutes for? Okay, there isn't. So, so our message really, it's simple. Stay off. Stay away and stay alive. So thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs>